So if I gave this problem to most algebra classes, maybe 50% of the people would be able to get this right. Now, this is not a difficult problem, but this particular problem has a lot of opportunities to make common mistakes. So why don't you go ahead and see how much algebra you know and see if you can figure this thing out. Uh, the problem is 5 minus 4r over 8 minus 2 minus 3r over 6. Of course, we want to subtract these two expressions. Now, if you could do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section, and then we're going to thoroughly go through this problem. I'm going to highlight uh, some of the places where students make common errors, and I'm going to show you two ways to do this problem. This is very, very important uh, for those of you out there that might be studying uh, any sort of algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this and... If you're uh, confused, uh, don't panic. You're going to be an expert at this by the time we finish this video. All right. Now, the first thing uh, we want to make sure you know how to do is that you can just subtract fractions. Okay, we're subtracting these rational expressions. But if you can't subtract fractions, there's no way you're going to be able to do these problems. So let's take a look at just some basic arithmetic, all right? Uh, how about 3 eighths minus 1 6? Can you subtract these two fractions? Well, what do we need to do when we're adding or subtracting fractions? The denominators must be the same, right? So here we have 3 eighths minus 1 6. We have to find the lowest common denominator. In this case, it's 24. Now, some of you uh, might say, well, this is pretty easy. You know, I can find the LCD. Well, here's the deal, right? What if I said uh, the fractions or the denominators here are 808, and this is like 642? Now, that's a whole different ball game. Could you find the LCD with these denominators? Well, you, uh, you still need to be able to do this. There is a procedure, okay, a method to find the lowest common denominator. And uh, it's the same procedure we use in basic arithmetic that we use in algebra, okay? So in algebra, you have to be able to find the lowest common denominator of uh, variable expressions. So again, uh, you know, I think a lot of students sometimes just kind of you know, uh, look at basic math or, you know, fractions and arithmetic. They're like, yeah, yeah, I know that stuff. Give me the algebra. Well, listen, you got to really master the basics before you can do well in algebra. Okay, so if you don't know how to find the LCD, uh, I teach this in my algebra course uh, uh, with respect to uh, variable expressions. But if you want just a, a basic review of fractions, check out my Math Foundations course. Uh, you can find a link to that in the description below. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. Okay, bottom line is that the LCD is 24, meaning that we have to change both of these fractions into 24, the denominators. So to change this fraction into 24, I have to multiply it by 3. And to change, uh, so if I multiply the denominator by 3, I have to multiply the numerator by 3. And this 6, to get it into a 24, I have to multiply it by 4. So I have to multiply the numerator by 4. So that's going to give us 9 over 24, these equivalent fractions, right? 9 over 24 minus 4 over 24. Now that we have the same denominators, all we have to do is subtract the respective numerators, and that is 5 over 24. Okay, now, if you know how to subtract fractions, that's great. But I want to show you another way to do this. Uh, and this is an absolute must know. It's probably my favorite hack in mathematics, and that is what I call the bow tie method. Okay, so, you know, uh, let me just draw a little stick figure here. If you saw a person, these are not popular. I don't wear a bow tie. Some of you might say, I bet you wear a bow tie and you have a pocket protector and calculators and pens. No, no, I look rather normal somewhat <laughs> in my opinion, but nothing against bow ties, but that's what a bow tie looks like. Now I say the bow tie method because uh, I want you to follow a bow tie pattern. All right, so you can add or subtract fractions using a bow tie method, and you can use this technique on uh, just regular fractions with numbers and algebraic fractions. It's a very, very powerful uh, technique for sure. So let me go ahead and show you how it works. So 
you're going to follow a very specific pattern. It has to be in this pattern. If you don't follow this order, you will get this wrong. Okay, so you're going to start with the denominator in the bottom right. So here it's 6. You're going to multiply across this way. So 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, so that's step one. You're always going to start from here to here. Now, this is a subtraction problem, so you're going to put a subtraction. And what we're doing here is forming our numerator. Okay, now the second step is it's going to be, you're going to start from this denominator in the bottom left, and you're going to multiply across this way. So it's going to be 8 times 1, which, of course, is 8. Okay, so let me go ahead and have you see these colors here, because I think that highlights uh, this pattern. Okay, okay so uh, 6 times 3 is 18 minus 8 times 1, which, of course, is 8, over 8 times 6 is 48. So 18 minus 8 is 10, so we have 10 over 48. We could reduce that fraction down to 5 over 24, which, of course, is the same thing we got over here. Okay. Now, the only uh, downside with the bow tie method is uh, you won't necessarily get the LCD. No big deal. We could always reduce. Okay. But this is a powerful technique, and you need to know it, and we can apply it uh, to this problem as well. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so this is a part of the problem here you really have to pay attention, okay? And if you do not work in this manner, you're going to increase your odds of making an error big time, right? So just kind of, you know, push the I believe button and say, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'll, you know, I'll follow your advice. Well, you know, I hope you do because I've made all the mistakes. I've seen all the mistakes. And here's the deal, okay? So first of all, we've already kind of verified your ability to add and subtract fractions, right? We just kind of went through that problem. So that's the first skill you need. Now, if you have that skill, then you should be able to do this problem, but here is where students mess up. Okay, let's make some observations here. Here I have a difference, five minus four R, and here is two minus three R, okay? Now, oftentimes, math books, math teachers, math tests, We'll just give you the problem this way, okay? If they are nice, they'll put parentheses around these expressions, okay? Now, oftentimes they do not put parentheses around because I guess they just want to be a little bit, you know, just kind of want to see what you want to know. But I'm telling you right now, anytime you see sums or differences in algebra, in mathematics, put grouping symbols, i.e. parentheses around these expressions. Just get in the habit uh, of doing that. So right here, uh, these obviously don't have parentheses, so put parentheses around them, okay? That's going to help you uh, avoid distributive property mistakes, okay? I could tell you right now, many, many, many people will make this type of error. But if you put these parentheses, uh, parentheses in, you're going to really reduce your chance of making a distributive property uh, mistake. Now, the distributive property is this property like this, 2 times uh, r plus 1. So this is going to be 2r plus uh, 2. Okay, so that's the distributive property. And if you didn't have these parentheses in, it's very easy to forget about the distributive property. Okay, again, super common mistake. So that's uh, uh, tip 1. Now, the second thing is the following, okay? After you have those in, we have a subtraction situation going on. So you want to change this uh, problem from subtraction, okay, to addition, to addition. So you're going to change this to addition, and it's going to be plus negative. So you're going to have this negative sign assigned to the numerator, okay? You should be very explicit about that because we're going to have to distribute this negative sign into the terms inside of the parentheses, okay? So I know I'm kind of, you know, highlighting a lot of things here. So first things first, you're going to put those parentheses in. Second thing is you want to just put this as a plus negative, put that negative right outside, nice and clear, uh, outside of those parentheses. Okay, so this is what we have now, all right? This is going to help us 
avoid making common mistakes. All right, I've seen this again, uh, you know, tens of thousands of times. So just trust me on this one. If you, uh, you know, get in the habit of this writing in this format, okay, you're going to really help yourself out big time. Okay, so now we're off to the races here. We have um, our rational expressions. And to add fractions, rational expressions, fractions with variables, we still need to have uh, those, uh, you know, the same denominator. So we're going to have to just kind of go through and uh, figure this thing out in terms of finding the lowest common denominator, etc. But one thing that we could do here, okay, uh, you could do it at this point. It's an optional thing, but I'm going to show you to it now, uh, show this now. Okay, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to encourage you to do this is that we have this plus negative right here, okay? So what's a good idea at this point is to distribute this negative sign into these terms, okay? So this will turn this into negative two, okay? This is a really technically, this is a negative one, okay? So if you wanna think of it that way, so negative one times positive two is negative two, negative one times this negative three R is positive three R, and then we're gonna put our parentheses around it like that, okay? So that's even, uh, you know, more um, kind of setting, well, my grammar is all messed up here. What I'm trying to say is if you take this additional step, it's going to set you up for success even, even that much further. All right. Now you don't have to do that, but if you do do that, you're like, okay, now I'm ready to just concentrate on adding these fractions. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, Hey, listen, I like to teach math, but please do not take uh, any grammar lessons uh, from me. Uh, that would not be good. All right. So let's go ahead and continue on now. So now we have our two rational expressions. Now we're like, okay, everything's set up here. I don't have the same denominator, but I'm thinking arithmetic, right? Uh, remember, we just did this problem, 3 eighths plus or minus 1 6, whatever it was. Uh, 8 and 6 are not common, so we have to find a common denominator, which, of course, is 24. All right, so we're going to have to turn each of these denominators into 24. So we're going to have to multiply this denominator by 3 and this numerator by 3, and then this denominator by 4 and this numerator by four. Okay, now, you know, this problem is taking a little bit of work. Uh, again, uh, when an algebra problem takes a lot of steps, you know, your chances of making an error go up exponentially. Okay, that's why you have to be neat and structured and, you know, really use these little tips that I'm, I'm talking about here to avoid these common mistakes. All right, so now at this point, we're going to take this four right here and we have to distribute in to this uh, expression right here. But it's clear that we have to do that because we have parentheses and then this three will be uh, distributed into these terms right here. Okay, so let's go to see that now. Okay, so right here. So first of all, let's just go ahead and look at the denominator. So three times eight, of course, is 24. And four times six is, of course, 24. Now let's get back to the distributive property. Three times five is 15. And three times this negative four R is negative 12 R. Four times three R is positive 12 R and four times this negative two is negative eight. Now, some of you might be saying, well, don't I have to have the uh, four over here on the left-hand side for the distributive property? No, you don't have to. You could rewrite it that way, but it's not the end of the world if you write it like this. Okay, so again, hopefully you can see, you know, if you could see what I'm doing, well, then if you are doing the prom like I'm doing it, then you could see what you're doing. Okay, this is a, you know, there's a lot of steps here. And again, all little, all sorts of little traps to make errors. Okay, so at this point, what do we have? Well, we have common denominators. So we're just going to write this over one fraction bar, one denominator, and we're going to add the numerator. Now, some of you might say, well, shouldn't I put my parentheses around um, this expression right here. Yes, you can. Okay. No problem there. Uh, again, that's not going to really help you at this point, but go ahead and just get in the habit. And now we're going to go ahead and add the numerators. Okay. So we're going to add this and this, and here is what that's going to look like. And we're going to put that over 24. Okay. So at this point, you can see that, uh, uh, these uh, 12 R's are going to cross cancel. Those are going to go away. And then we're going to end up with 15 minus 8 over 24. All right. So that's what's going to be our answer. The 12 R's go away. So 15 minus 8 is 7 or 7 over 24, which, of course, is the solution. Now, as I indicated, 
if I gave this as a, uh, a quiz question, a lot of people would get this wrong. A lot of good students because uh, they're going to make an error, all right? A huge part of being successful in mathematics, if you truly want to be successful, if you want to just kind of, you know, learn a little bit here, a little bit there, that's how you get frustrated in math, okay? Because you're not fully committed, you know, I basically, I'm just going to be honest with you. If you want to be great in math, you got to be fully committed and you got to be disciplined and focused. But these are things that you can work on, right? You don't have to be a genius, all right? That's, you don't have to be, you know, um, you know, a rocket scientist to do well in algebra. What you have to have is focus and discipline and you just got to, you know, put in the effort and practice, okay? But where people are going to get in trouble is they're just going to lose focus through all these little steps with all these little opportunities to make errors. Now, I'm going to show you real quick how we could have done this problem using a bow tie method. All right, let's suppose I just wanted to get right into it. And uh, I'm going to pick it up from right here where we turn this uh, subtract. Well, I put my parentheses in, okay? I'll turn a subtraction into a plus negative situation. So let's say at this point, I said, you know, I'm just going to use that bow tie method that YouTube math man told me about. So let's just go ahead and do it. Okay, so six times this, six times this expression right here is going to be six times five minus four R. Okay, so remember that's step one. Then I'll take this eight times this. Now I've got to include this negative. Eight times this negative is negative eight times this right here is going to be negative eight times two minus three R over eight times six, which of course is 48. Now this is looking like a lot easier to do than what I just showed you. And in fact it is, but you need to know both uh, techniques. Okay, so right here, we need to just go ahead and uh, apply the distributive property to clean up this numerator. Let's go ahead and do that now. So when we do this, we're going to have 6 minus 5, of course, is 30. Or sorry, 6 times 5 is 30. So 6 times negative 4R is negative 24R plus negative 8 times uh, 2 is negative 16. And negative 8 times negative 3R is a positive 24. And when we finish this up, that's going to be all over 48. We're going to see here, oh my goodness, look at this. 24 cross cancels with this 24. All we're left with is 30 minus 16 which is 14, and so this is just going to be 14 over 48, and when I reduce that, I get 7 over 24, okay? Now, some of you might find this second approach easier. Matter of fact, I think it is easier. Typically, when I'm faced with a problem like this, if I had to do this problem, I would use the bow tie method, more or less, but you need to know both methods, okay? But uh, anyways, uh, this video was a little bit long. It's because there was a lot of steps that I had to kind of cover and stress because students continue to make these type of errors. So let's suppose you watch this video and be like, yeah, yeah, you really kind of just went too much there, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Uh, but you know what? I tried to emphasize uh, my, well, let me say this, put it this way. Uh, my emphasis is in direct proportion to how many um, uh, mistakes I see, okay, in this particular area. If I see this mistake all the time, I'm going to increase my emphasis and really, really, really cover it, okay? All right, so hopefully this has gone into your long-term uh, memory, but the only way you're going to really get this into your long-term memory is to practice. you got to practice this stuff or you're going to forget it. Now, if you're learning algebra, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, whatever the case might be, I'm going to leave links to all my main uh, courses in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of additional uh, videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out as well in algebra, geometry, trigonometry, etc. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.